Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Gemini TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Hi and welcome back to Azian News and here is the latest news. Cambodian Prime Minister meets Myanmar junta leader to arch Myanmar peace. Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Sen meets with Myanmar's military ruler Ming Oh Leng amid criticism of the first visit by a head of government since the army seized power from an elected government last year. He makes the visit to press Myanmar peace plan sponsored by the ASEAN. Hun Sen was met by an honor guard and red carpet when he arrived, just as protests by coup opponent broke out in other parts of the country over fears his trip will provide more legitimacy to the ruling junta. Myanmar military-run television later showed images of the two leaders bumping elbows and sitting down for talks in gilded chairs. Hun Sen's two-day visit was the first by a head of government since the army overthrew the civilian administration of Aung San Suu Kyi over February 1st coup last year, sparking months of protest and bloody crackdown. Protesters singing on Yangon Street against Prime Minister Cambodian visit. A witness video shows a group of protesters marching and running on the streets of Yangon against the visit of Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Sen to Myanmar. The protesters hold a banner reading Yangon Strike and chanted slogan including Our goal is to achieve federal democracy and victory for the revolution, destroy the military regime. Hun Sen was greeted by an honor guard and red carpet when he arrives just as protests by coup opponents broke out in other parts of the country over fears of his trip will provide more legitimacy to the ruling junta. The Cambodian leader who has been criticized over crackdowns on his political opponents at home, he makes the visit to press Myanmar peace plan sponsored by the ASEAN. Cambodia's current chair of the 10-member ASEAN, which adopted a five-point consensus peace plan in April 2021. In Myanmar, opponents of military rule have said Hun Sen, who seized power in Phnom Penh in a 1997 coup, is backing the junta by making the trip. The local government of Manila opens a zoo for people who have received vaccinations. Manila's local government opens up its zoo as a vaccination center for minors and the elderly as means of encouraging them to get vaccinated while being entertained by animals. According to the authorities, a thousand COVID-19 injections will be allocated per day for minors aged 12 to 17 years old and senior citizens. Katapos mo bakunahan ng mga 12 to 17, pati po yung mga seniors, pati po yung mga... After the vaccination of those aged 12 to 17 years, seniors and those with multiple illness, they can go around the zoo. They can relax and forget about their problems. Ang dating, nakaka-relax po talaga, nakakalimut tayo ng konti ng ating pong problema. Daily coronavirus infections have hit records several times in the Philippines, driven by the highly contagious Omicron variant, prompting a tightening of mobility curbs. The country has so far fully inoculated about half of its population, but many areas outside the capital region are lagging behind. Indonesia raised an evacuate to apartment in Jakarta after earthquake with 6.7 magnitude. Jakarta residents evacuate an apartment building in the Indonesian capital after a powerful 6.7 magnitude earthquake struck off Indonesia's Java Island. Indonesia's meteorology agency says the earthquake hit 52 km or 32 miles of Banten province at a depth of 10 km but did not have the potential to cause a tsunami. 
Indonesia straddles the so-called Pacific Ring of Fire, a highly seismically active zone where different plates on the Earth's crust meet and create a large number of earthquakes and volcanoes. Last month, a 7.4 magnitude earthquake struck eastern Indonesia, triggering a tsunami warning and also sending residents fleeing from their homes but causing only minor damage. Bali bombing suspect sentenced to 15 years in prison. His lawyer says a prominent Indonesian militant believes to be linked to the 2002 Bali bombing which killed 202 people on the resort island of Bali has been sentenced to 15 years in prison. Aris Sumarsono, better known as Zul Karnain, was a former military commander in Jama'a Islamiyah, a Southeast Asian jihadist network with ties to Al-Qaeda. The 50-year-old had been on the run for almost two decades after being named a suspect in the Bali attacks. Police and prosecutors accused Zul Karnain of playing the role in making the bombs used in the Bali attacks and in the 2003 bombing of the JW Marriott Hotel in Jakarta that killed 12 people. His lawyer, Asludin Hadjani, informs Zulkarnai was found guilty of withholding information and sheltering an extremist figure not of involvement in the Bali attacks, describing his client's jail sentence as too long. Asludin say he will consult with Zulkarnai about a possible appeal. Japan sends aid to Tonga after natural disaster. Japan sends emergency relief supplies to Tonga after the South Pacific island nation was hit by a volcanic eruption and tsunami and largely cut off from the outside world. Boxes of drinking water are among the supplies loaded onto an aircraft parked on the tarmac of Komaki base. The Japanese government announces it will provide at least $1 million in aid as well as drinking water and equipment to clean the volcano ash in Tonga. The Red Cross says it teams in Tonga had confirmed that salt water from the tsunami and volcano ash were polluting the drinking water of tens of thousands of people. At least three people were killed and hundreds of homes in Tonga's smaller outer island destroyed after Saturday's huge eruption triggered tsunami waves that rolled over the islands home to 105,000 people. Tonga thanks China for providing relief supplies after disaster. Tonga's deputy prime minister thanked China for providing timely relief supplies after his country was hit by volcanic eruption and tsunami. The Chinese government has donated a batch of emergency supplies, including drinking water and food worth 280,000 yuan to the Tonga's government through the Chinese embassy. The, the first donation uh, of, of this kind that we received. Tonga's deputy prime minister, Poasi Mataele Tei, expresses his gratitude to the Chinese aid on behalf of Tonga. The relief supplies are the first donation of his kind they have received after the disaster. The Red Cross Society of China has also provides emergency humanitarian assistance worth 100,000 US dollars to the tsunami stricken Tonga. However, damage to the undersea cable is expected to block the internet access in Tonga for a month or longer. Chinese President Xi Jinping sends a message of condolence to King of Tonga to Pou the Sixth over the grave disaster caused by the volcanic eruption in the country. On the same day, Chinese Premier Li Qixiang also sends a message of condolence to Tonga Prime Minister Xiaosi Sovaleni. She says China is willing to provide support within its capacity to Tonga to help its people defeat the disaster and rebuild their homeland. China's solution for economic growth amid the pandemic worth studying. Klaus Schwab, founder and an executive chairman of the World Economic Forum, in an interview says China can make huge contributions and present practical solutions to address global issues. 
Schwab's remarks came after Chinese President Xi Jinping delivers a special address at the 2022 World Economic Forum virtual session five years after she first attended the World Economic Forum annual meeting back in January 2017. Schwab to Yu Yu Antan Tian, a new media arm of China Media Group that, the last five years he have witnessed how China has secured remarkable achievements in economic development, as well as the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic, which can present its own learnings as relevant contribution to solving global issues. Last month, the World Economic Forum announced that, due to the continued concerns of the Omicron variant, it will defer its annual meeting, which is usually held in the Swiss ski resort of the Davos. Initially scheduled to take place between January 17 to 21, it is now planned for early summer. Japan wants to work with France for free and open in the Pacific. Foreign Minister Yoshimasa Hayashi says Japan wants to increase cooperation with France and realize a free and open Indo-Pacific in the 2 plus 2 talks between the foreign and defense ministers of both countries. Hayashi's comments comes as the region faces China's growing military might and North Korea's missile development. France has overseas territories in the Indo-Pacific and stations armed forces in the region where tension over Taiwan has been rising as China seeks to assert its sovereignty claims over the island. And North Korea has launched missiles in an unusually fast sequences of weapons test. Joint military drills between the two countries have increased in the frequency in recent years. The bilateral talks come ahead of some security-related meetings involving leaders in the region, including a virtual summit between U.S. President Joe Biden and Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida, and consultations between Australian and British Foreign and Defense Ministers. South Korea signs a memorandum for $1 billion loan to Egypt. President Moon Jae-in announces during his visit to Cairo, South Korea signs a memorandum of understanding for a $1 billion loan to Egypt. Jai-in discusses with Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi bilateral relations and strengthening cooperation in transportation, energy and telecommunications. The South Korea President's visit comes following a golf tour that started earlier this week. Ambassador Hong Jin-wook told Reuters that the loan is expected to be for five years. Well, that's the whole news for today. Would like to thank Jelo's Post to Wardrobe and stay safe, stay healthy. We will see you again.